welcome back to our next episode of UNEP 2024 chemistry paper 545 stock 1 the theory responses here we are making a sample of expected responses and your usual tutor the Matume Titus handling biology and chemistry last time we handled some part of section B and today we are also handling still the same part we are now moving to section B part 2 in that part we have only two items item 5 and item 6 where are these items coming from they are coming from element of construct 4 which says that the learner appreciates the existence of natural resources in the environment and their importance in life so we are simply going to look at natural resources what are those natural resources that are existing in the environment you have to know the categories of natural resources you should be able to explain each category you should also be able to give the examples of those natural resources under their respective categories as well know the impact of human activities on the natural resources and also know how you can mitigate those impacts and finally be able to tell how those natural resources are important in the environment just like our element of construct states here. The topics under this element of construct we simply have water, air, rocks and minerals, we have carbon in the environment and then finally fossil fuels. All here we just simply looking at natural resources. These are simply some of the natural resources you're going to meet and how are we approaching this item? When you're approaching item four and five about natural resources, the first thing that should come to your mind, read through your item salary, check out what is the category of the natural resources they are talking about. How would you know it? Look for the natural resources being talked about in your item. Be able to categorize them. I told you it is either a renewable natural resource or a non-renewable natural resource. There is a reason for which. Also, after that, be able to give the reason. Why are you calling it renewable? It can be replaced can be replenished after being used up. And then we also need an example. What is that example of a renewable natural resource? Be able to give that example. Thereafter, the next part that should come to your mind is the composition. You are talking about natural resource, maybe vegetation. What is the composition of this natural resource? What are those elements making up this natural resource? If not the elements, maybe they could also be compounds. Then the next thing after that, remember we are looking at the impact. How is man impacting the existence of natural resources? How are the human activities affecting the existence of the natural resources? The next thing, check on the impact of human activities on natural resources and the environment. For each impact, I say every time you give an impact, always escort it with a mitigation. So after giving each impact, give us the mitigation. What is the solution that you would give to solve that challenge? Thereafter, give us the importance of the natural resources. Of course, you should be able to know the importance of the natural resources you're talking about. Now we are going to look at this item, item five of UNEB 2024, paper one. Our item simply states that Peter, the cattle keeper, grazes his cattle on community land. During the dry season, he practices bush burning and also takes his cattle to drink water from the community water source. Peter's practices have raised concern in the community. The area chairperson has organized a meeting to create awareness for Peter and the community. Task, as a chemistry learner, make a write-up of the message the chairperson will present to the community. Yes, we understand. I gave you this answering approach. But as you're giving your responses, understand that you're going to give a message. A message. So make it in that proper format of a message. The first thing you should be able to give, at least give a simple title. Just a simple title. It may not carry marks, but at least give a simple title, which you can always drive from your scenario and your task. Combine the two, you always come up with a simple title. Having done that, now run back to our approach. What are the category of natural resources there? The first thing, identify the natural resources being affected in the scenario. The first thing they told you, Peter grazes cattle. Being a cattle grazer, meaning this guy is affecting a given natural resource, which is simply vegetation. And the other thing, they told you during the dry season, he practices bush burning. 
still is burning down the grass. That is still part of vegetation. Then the other thing, he goes ahead to take his cattle to drink water from the community water source. The other natural resource being affected is water. That being said, it's not only that you're affecting vegetation and water. Remember, as you're burning, there is emission of those fumes, carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere, meaning you're going to pollute our air. That's also a natural resource being affected. And in the same part, we realize this guy is conducting his grazing on land. As he burns away the grass, he's also killing some other components in the soil. So the other natural resource being affected is the soil. So the first thing you should always do, identify all the natural resources being affected in the scenario. After that, go ahead to categorize the natural resources being affected. You realize that in this scenario of ours, the vegetation, air, soil, and water, all of them are simply renewable natural resources. That is the category. And if it's being marked, they give you a mark for the category. You've identified the category of natural resources. And these that you have given, they are simply the examples of natural resources in that category. Then the next thing, give a reason as to why you're calling them renewable natural resources. You're calling them renewable natural resources simply because they can be replenished once used up in man's lifetime. That is the mark where you get the mark for the reason. You've given us the reason as to why you're calling them renewable natural resources. Having done that, pick one natural resource from your scenario. Because we understand, yes, this scenario has many of them being affected, but just pick one and check how it was affected in the scenario by Peter's practices. We are picking one of these ones. You can either pick vegetation, air, soil, or water. In all cases, each one of them has been affected. That's why you pointed them out. Then you are picking vegetation. I said after that, you go to composition. Composition, you simply look at components that make up that natural resource. So you realize that our vegetation here is made up of cellulose, and this cellulose consists of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You're, going to, you're getting marks for each component you're listing. You get a mark for carbon, mark for hydrogen, and rather than for oxygen. And all of them will be graded at the last level. Then we go to the next thing. Having done composition, you move according to your answer point, you say the impact of human activities. Go ahead and tell us that Peter's practices cause the following impact. How they affect the natural resource. You check bush burning and overgrazing leaves the land bare, exposing it to agents of soil erosion. In the end of it, you're going to end up with infertile soils, and these ones do not favor agriculture. Give us a mitigation. How would you solve that challenge? How could we mitigate that challenge of Peter burning the bush and also coming out overgrazing? The first thing you could talk, you could talk about, you could talk about proper grazing methods. Peter can opt for proper grazing methods like paddocking to avoid this impact of overgrazing on the same piece of land and also to avoid this instance of going ahead to burn our bushes so that we can enable the grass to regenerate again in a way of searching for fresh grass for his cattle. And the other thing, if you can't, if Peter can't go with that option, then the other thing you could talk about enforcing strict laws against bush burning. This is a practice which is not that good. We could also look at enforcing strict laws against bush burning such that Peter will be afraid of burning the bush again. Or else, we should also advise this Peter to carry out replanting of the vegetation such that we restore up the lost vegetation. Then the other thing you could talk about, that bush burning, yes, you understand this bush burning is releasing toxic fumes. Where are they going to? These greenhouse gases are simply going to the atmosphere and they are going to trap heat energy that's going to be reverted back onto the Earth's surface leading to global warming. That's another challenge. This global warming may cause change in climate patterns. How are we going to mitigate that? The first thing you would look at is replanting the vegetation to absorb the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, reducing or balancing the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. Or else, you can stop the act of bush burning by again enforcing strict laws against bush burning. They have given the impact and its mitigation. And Having done that, we move to the next level. We need to know the importance of this natural resource. What's the importance of this vegetation? Vegetation, you don't simply look at only grass. There are several other components of vegetation. And this vegetation participates, or it has a role it, it does in formation of brain. 
how through evapotranspiration. So it's important in rainfall formation. And the other thing you also find that this vegetation is a source of food. The source of food, the human being, the society. And the other thing is also a source of herbal medicine to the residents in the society. And if sustainably used, it's also a source of food for the animals of these residents. So it's about sustainable use of these natural resources. That's all we could need from you concerning this item five. Thank you.